On the 26th of April, 1986, the world experienced the worst man-made disaster in history. Just 20 kilometers south of the border with Belarus in the Ukrainian town of Pripyat, a meltdown at the number four reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant caused an explosion and fire that released radioactive particles into the atmosphere. It's been three decades since that incident, and although we might start to see the wildlife returning to the area, these radioactive particles still hang in the air and will do for a long time. Scientists measure radioactive materials in half-lives, or the time it takes for half the radiation to decay naturally. Half-lives range from fractions of a second to billions of years. Several different types of radiation were expelled during the Chernobyl disaster, and they all have different half-lives. Iodine-131 lasts for around eight days and has been linked to the thyroid cancer that was found in many young people after the disaster. Cesium-137 lasts for about 30 years. It's only just started to die off, and it's why, if you're so inclined, you can now take a two-day tour of Pripyat. Plutonium-239 has a half-life of 24,000 years and can still be found near the plant site at Chernobyl. And then there's uranium-238, the principal ingredient in nuclear fusion. It has a half-life of 4.7 billion years. For some perspective, our planet is only 4.5 billion years old. There's still 16 tons of that uranium rotting away at the number four reactor at Chernobyl. Yikes. There's no doubt radiation can be frightening. At least certain types of it can be. The type of radiation we've been talking about is ionizing radiation. It's the type of radiation that has enough energy to literally rip electrons from their atoms. And it's the stuff that you probably should be worried about. You're actually exposed to small doses of ionizing radiation every single day. This exposure is measured in sieverts. One sievert is comprised of a thousand millisieverts, and one millisievert is comprised of 1,000 microsieverts. For example, sleeping next to someone rather than alone gives you an extra 0.05 microsieverts of radiation exposure, and eating a banana exposes you to 0.1 microsieverts. Some may not surprise you, like a dental x-ray for example, which will give you an extra dosage of about 5 microsieverts. But some might surprise you, like how a seven hour flight will expose you to eight times as much radiation as those dental x-rays. But all this pales in comparison to the amount of radiation that you receive from just existing. This is known as background radiation, and it accounts for 100 times the amount of radiation that you are exposed to on a seven hour flight. Now, there are certain jobs that have high risk of radiation exposure. US radiation workers, for example, no duh, have a maximum yearly dosage limit of 50 millisieverts. Seems like a lot, right? More than 10 times your yearly background dosage. But there's an occupation which has an even higher exposure to radiation. Astronauts. An astronaut in a single year will absorb 140 millisieverts of radiation. That's 35 times your yearly background dosage. But not even astronauts top the list when it comes to ionizing radiation exposure. No, that honor lies with your average pack a day smoker's lung. Certain areas of a smoker's lung can be exposed to as much as 160 millisieverts of radiation a year. That's 40 times the background dosage. The dangers of smoking are well documented. Cancer, emphysema, heart disease. But one that gets overlooked is the fact that spending an entire year in Pripyat is actually better for your health than lighting up. In Western culture, X is used to symbolize the unknown or the mysterious. Think X-Men, X-rays, or even its use in algebra. But why is this? Next week, we go back in time to discover the origins of this foreboding character. You won't want to miss it. That's next week on The Science of Everything.